You know, folks, this takes me to this this incident in uh, in Kansas City, where you had this 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 wacko former KKK or current KKK member stab three Jewish people, and it has been fascinating to collect information on this. And to find out exactly who it was who inspired this guy. Who, in fact, there's a, there's a piece here at the pjmedia.com by a man named Ron Radosh. Who inspired the Nazi Klan leader's actions in Kansas? And they've got the answer simply by reading this guy's own words. The, the, this, this, this nutcase, what was his name? Glenn Miller. He's a demented American Nazi KKK leader, and he is a a huge Democrat. Yeah, and it's it turns out that they have found some things this guy has written, and there is a name. He actually mentions the name of the man who inspired him to stab these three Jewish people. I'm going to read to you what this guy wrote. Jew journalist Max Blumenthal exposes and explains this attempt by a foreign government, Israel, to buy the presidential election for the neocon warmongering Republican establishment. Like I've been saying, the Jews simply don't trust a lame duck black president with the name Hussein. Jews fear his re-election, thus this Jewish super PAC to defeat him. Max Blumenthal is the son of Sidney Blumenthal, who is, of course, Hillary Clinton's confidant. But Max Blumenthal, if I'm not mistaken, works at Media Matters for America. And Max Blumenthal is one of a cabal of left-wing journalists that despise Israel. And this guy found his way... The things that these people had written, and he was inspired. He admits he was inspired by all of this. And that's why he took action against the three Jewish people in Kansas City. We'll be back after this. Don't go away. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have just been told that something I shared with you moments ago is incorrect. I have this post from PJ Media, and I want to read it to you. As I sit, it's by Ron Radosh, and he's in Berlin, that's where he lives. As I sit writing from Berlin, Germany, I woke up this morning with the news that a demented American Nazi and KKK leader, Glenn Miller, has been arrested as the main suspect in the Kansas City murder of three American Jews. Well, now, I was just informed that two Christians were killed and one Jewish person. Now, back to Mr. Radosh that all three were undoubtedly preparing for tonight's Passover Seder makes the tragedy even more abhorrent. And he says he's ready in a country and city, i.e. Berlin, where all the residents are always aware of the horrors of the Nazi past. It comes as a shock that this wanton act of vicious anti-Semitic murder has taken place not in Germany, but in the United States. Of course, it's an outrage that the authorities are going out of the way to not call it by its name. Rather than condemning Miller's action as a result of his Nazi beliefs, they say it looks like a hate crime and that they make light of his yelling Heil Hitler upon his arrest. Even the regional director of the St. Louis branch of the ADL held her words. As the New York Times reports, while it's too early to label these shootings as a hate crime, the fact that two Jewish institutions were targeted by the same individual just prior to the start of the Passover holiday is deeply troubling and certainly gives us pause, said Karen Arasti of the St. Louis Regional Director of the ADL in a statement. Ms. Arasti should have been more upfront about the obvious motivation of Miller and not hedged her words. Fortunately, a quick look at some of the anti-Semitic extremist websites has led to the following post by Mr. Miller, produced verbatim below. Jew journalist Max Blumenthal exposes and explains this attempt by a foreign government, Israel, to buy the presidential election for the neocon warmongering Republican establishment. 
And Mr. Radosh here is uh, making the point that it is Max Blumenthal who has inspired this Glenn Miller to embark on his uh, incident of carnage. So I, I don't know. I've, I've been told that uh, only one of the three victims was Jewish, and this guy thinks all three were. At any rate, this guy, Glenn Miller, is a former KKK member. He, he once ran for office as a Democrat. All the KKK are Democrats. They always have been. And uh, he's an anti-Semite, obviously, and he did shot Heil Hitler when he was uh, arrested. And his what has been posted by him on this, these are apparently some really wacko extremist uh, pro-Nazi anti-Semitic websites, and this guy's posted plenty there, where he identifies the people who inspire him, and he, he mentioned a Max Blumenthal. Now, the only reason I mention that is that every time an incident like this happens, I take you back to the shooting in Colorado. What did Brian Ross at ABC do? He just he had the name of, of a shooter, and the first thing he did was go on the Internet and try to find that name in a Tea Party website member roster. And he did. And he said, oh, you can't confirm it yet, but it looks like the shooter has Tea Party ties. And it turned out the shooter had nothing to do with the Tea Party. Anytime there's an incident like this, a school shooting, you name it, the media immediately tries to say that the shooter was not motivated by whatever was in his or her, his or her own mind, but rather by talk radio, by Fox News, by conservatives, what have you. And in this case, here we have a guy who committed public acts, murder and so forth, and he mentions who inspired him. And concomitantly, the New York Times, eh, you know, it's barely a hate crime. We ain't going to get into it much here. Right, because it's embarrassing who's inspiring this guy. you got a former KKK game member who's literally says run for office as a Democrat, inspired by some people at Media Matters. Oh, can't, can't, can't report that. So that is the primary reason for imparting um, this to you.